Hey there Bixby developers, Jonathan Pan here. Today I'm going to be talking about how to manage context in your Bixby capsule. For this video we're going to be using the Earthquake Insights capsule over at our GitHub at github.com slash Bixby developers. Once you're here at this GitHub, just do a quick control F and type in Earthquake. Make sure it is the Earthquake Insights capsule and not the Earthquake Finder. So click on the Earthquake Insights. Give it a quick download, and now just extract that like this. Make sure at the folder level you're at the top level where the files are inside of it. Then just drag and drop that into your Bixby Studio. Great. And before we do anything else with this capsule, let's go into the dialogues. So that's going to be in your resources en, the result.dialog. And we're going to let Bixby say, I found X number of earthquakes. So just type this in, hashtag curly bracket size, this. So now if we do find earthquakes in San Jose. I found these 12 earthquakes in 17.429. You'll see how here it says 12 now. And this will be useful for us to see just how many results it finds and how that'll change throughout this video. So we're going to be answering the following questions. What is a session? What is context? And how do we change context? And we're going to start with what is a session? So a session in Bixby is basically using a capsule uninterrupted. And here's an example. This is the live marketplace. What would you like me to say? This is a session. Whose voice would you like me to change to? This is a session. So here you can tell it's currently a session because of this thing at the bottom, at least when you're at a result view. So when it says you're now talking to ca capsule name, then you know that you are still in that capsule. When a session times out, you'll notice that this will go away. Also, you'll see in this example that I'll be clicking away from this uh, session by clicking on the capsule page. This is a new session. And there you can see how this is going to be a new session and not the same session from the first one. And sessions can end when Bixby is closed. When the timeout screen happens, uh, they're different for result views and input views. If you navigate away from your capsule, like how I did there, or if you are at a result view without lock-in. So we've answered what is a session. Now let's talk about what is context. For this example, we're going to listen to a conversation between Julia and John. How was your day yesterday? It was splendid. Lunch was really good. What did you eat for lunch? I ate lentils and raisins. Simply delectable. Who were you with? I had lunch with my four cats. They're my only friends. What did you do for dinner? For dinner, I had frozen peas and two banana peels. All alone in my basement. Not even my cats joined me. So humans by nature understand context during a conversation. When Julia asks John, how was your day yesterday, now the subject becomes yesterday. Then if Julia asks, what did you have for lunch, you can insinuate that Julia is actually saying, what did you have for lunch yesterday? Here you can see that the context is now yesterday lunch and John answers accordingly in terms of what he ate yesterday for lunch. And now when Julia asks, who are you with? She's asking, who were you with yesterday at lunch? And here you can see that John answers that. He was with his four cats yesterday during lunch. But notice how he doesn't have to say yesterday during lunch, and Julia doesn't have to ask, who were you with yesterday during lunch? And finally, Julia asks, what did you do for dinner? Now, in this case, dinner replaces lunch as the meal in question. So then it becomes a conversation about yesterday, during dinner and, you know, somewhat optional, but who was John with? So John answers this yesterday for dinner. He had peas, banana peels, and he was all alone. 
So now let's go over this example of context within Bixby. However, before we continue with this example, we need to actually add a training for the second utterance to add time into the context. So just type in, how about earthquakes that happened in 2018? Select 2018 and set that to be a date time expression, time dot date time expression, just click that and click done. And for the goal, we want it to be find earthquakes right there. Then click save and compile. Now that's done compiling, we can continue with our example. First, let's ask the capsule to show me earthquakes in San Jose. I found these 12 earthquakes in 17.4. So it's found 12 earthquakes. And let's open the debugger. You can do that by clicking on this little bug icon. Here we can see that it has a viv.geo being part as the inputs, which is being fed into find earthquakes. And as a little trick, you can click on this thing right here and click show import executions. Here you can see it looks a little bit more confusing, but we can see how San Jose is flagged as a geo.search term. And that's what's being used to create the geo.search region, which is fed into our action. Now, Let's go ahead and run the second one. How about earthquakes that happened in 2018? I found these 100 earthquakes in 17. So here we can see that it's found a lot more earthquakes. Right here, the limit for this capsule that's being set is 100 earthquakes at a time. And now we can see all sorts of different earthquakes happening here. But if we go to the debugger, now we can see that it looks a bit more uh, impressive. But more importantly, we can see that without asking Bixby specifically, how about earthquakes that happened in 2018 in San Jose? We can see here that San Jose is still part of the current context. See here that it's still extrapolated San Jose based on the previous query. And here you can see that 2018 has been extracted from the most recent query, which is how about earthquakes that happened in 2018. Now both of these are then fed into the find earthquakes action, which finds the proper earthquakes in 2018 in San Jose. Now let's add a magnitude to this. So show earthquakes of at least 2.0 magnitude. I found these 15 earthquakes in 17.4. Now we've still retained San Jose. We've still retained 2018. And now we've added a minimum magnitude of 2.0 see that the, all these results have magnitudes of over 2.0 along with the proper dates near San Jose. Now let's do show me earthquakes in Oakland. I found these 14 earthquakes in 8.60. We can see that we've retained the minimum magnitude from the previous query. We can see that we've retained the time from a couple queries ago. And finally, we can see that we've replaced San Jose with Oakland as the geo.search term. So we're maintaining context, but replacing older inputs with a newer input, in this case, the city of Oakland. And finally, what happens if we just tell it to find earthquakes? I found these 14 earthquakes in 8.605. And there you can see that it actually did the exact same query as previously. It used Oakland, min magnitude of 2.0, and 2018. It is extrapolated the context from the previous queries, and it's maintained that context. So this is actually the default behavior in Bixby. Unlike most programmatic languages, you would assume that once you have finished a function or an action or whatever, the variables that are stored are usually forgotten because they've been scoped to that specific function. So these really behave more like global variables once at least a session is fired. And each of these concepts, the min magnitude, max magnitude, uh, so on, the daytime expression, and the search region are saved within Bixby during a session and they're pulled every time that the action find earthquake is fired. So now we've answered the question, what is context? How do we change context? One method is to forget individual inputs every single time. And we can do this by adding features transient. Hopping back into the code, if you open the models folder concepts, let's go ahead and add that line to 
these three concepts, the approximate magnitude, the min magnitude, and the max magnitude. Now that we've added transient to each of those concepts, let's go ahead and run this query. Show earthquakes in San Jose in 2017 with magnitude between 2.5 and 7.0. I found these 15 earthquakes in 17.429 miles. So now let's see what happens when we run find earthquakes. I found these 100 earthquakes in 17.429. Here we can see that we found many more earthquakes than just the 15 previously because the max magnitude and the min magnitude have been forgotten. When you go to the debugger, you can see here that the max magnitude and min magnitude are not here. However, if we just click back, we can see that they are indeed just right there with the max and min magnitude. So before we go on, let's go ahead and delete features transient from min magnitude, max magnitude, and approximate magnitude. The next thing I'd like to show is drop contextual inputs. And we can add this flag to the output of an action. So what happens if no results are found? This will drop the old contextual inputs and rerun the query. Let's go ahead and add that to our code. In the actions folder, you have the find earthquakes model. All you have to do is open a curly bracket and on empty, drop contextual inputs just like that. Let's do a quick example with the drop contextual inputs commented out. Show earthquakes in San Jose in 20, 18 with magnitudes greater than 3.0. You see that has found three earthquakes. And now let's ask it to show earthquakes in San Diego. So here we can see that without the drop contextual inputs, when the query gets so specific, which is which now it's looking for earthquakes in 2018 in San Diego with a minimum magnitude of 3.0, it says, it just simply says, I couldn't find any earthquakes. So now let's go ahead and enable that flag and rerun these two queries. Go ahead and uncomment out the drop contextual inputs. And let's do show earthquakes in San Jose in 2018 with magnitudes greater than 3.0. We can see that it has found three earthquakes. And now let's do show earthquakes in San Diego. I couldn't find any earthquakes. I found these three earthquakes in 15.901 miles. So now you can see that it actually still found us three earthquakes in San Diego. But what happened there? Here you can see that the only input it currently has to give us some kind of results is the San Diego uh, geo.search term. So basically, it dropped the 2018, it overwrote San Jose, and it dropped the magnitude greater than 3.0. This here is very helpful for dropping contextual inputs and to basically still provide some kind of result to the user uh, so that way they can continue their experience without just giving them an empty result. So in summary, in this video, we've gone over the default behavior the features transient, and drop contextual inputs. The default behavior is useful if you want to remember declared concepts to build context for an ongoing conversation. So let's say your capsule, you're able to add on additional specifications to a query. Like, for example, this earthquake capsule, how it has multiple inputs, and you can specify a time, then you can ask it to add a magnitude, and you can change a city, so on and so forth. The default behavior is very powerful for that. However, features transient is also very useful since it can always forget an input whenever an action is invoked. This way, if you have a simple capsule where it only takes one input, maybe two, but also even zero, features transient can be very helpful to continuously forget the concept so that way your capsule doesn't keep assuming 
that it's the same input over and over. Now, you can also always forget an output as well. And this is useful for if your capsule keeps spitting out the same results over and over, if you wanted to give a new result every time the user asks something. And finally, you've learned how to use the drop contextual inputs, which is very useful for basically if you want to maintain the default behavior. And also, if the queries become too constricting, it'll still drop inputs, but it will still deliver something relevant to at least your most recent input. And there, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this answers some questions about maintaining context in Bixby. My name is Jonathan Pan, Technical Evangelist for Bixby. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at John without the H. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.